We're very blessed to have a visitor that's a veteran and our guest speaker today. Uh, Teresa Arms, who's one of our family here, was nice enough to let us know about him, so we're so glad he's here today, Mr. David Elliott. Oklahoma, uh, 
uh, still had family in Missouri. And my wife grew up in Louisiana and Oklahoma. Uh, but Montgomery County, Tennessee, is where we wanted to make our home. Uh, we found a church family out across the river in a place called Cunningham. Uh, the people here are so friendly, and the school system is awesome. So when we retired, we built our home in, here in Cunningham. Uh, and it's just become home for us. Uh, what is a better? And as I said, these young people that gave these presentations probably covered it a lot better than I'm going to attempt to do it here in these next couple of paragraphs. But anyone who has ever served in any form of the military is considered a veteran. Some spend their entire career in service like I did. Others only served for a short time. Some went to war. Others did not. There are many different jobs in the military. We'll, we'll often, the first thing that comes to mind, we'll think of an infantryman in a firefight, all that action and suspense. Uh, we watch movies and TV that kind of depict a lot of that. And, and that is a very important job. But there's also doctors and nurses tending to medical needs. There are engineers constructing buildings and bridges. Uh, we've got helicopter pilots that, uh, that, that transport much needed supplies and get personnel to and from different locations. Some, some are combat pilots that actually fly combat missions uh, against the enemy. We've got mechanics and cooks and administrative clerks. You want to put an army on its heels, let the paperwork not go through, and somebody not get paid, or the, uh, that promotion that you were counting on not happen. That, that really will stop the motivation, and, and, and uh, the army can't operate without those types of jobs going on. So those are all important jobs as well. I was an artillery. I worked on radar systems that could track incoming artillery and mortar shells, and I also spent countless hours in Iraq pouring over target packets tracking terrorist cells and high-value individuals that we needed to go after. But it was not always shooting at people and dropping bombs. Uh, we also had peacekeeping missions in Kosovo and Macedonia where we weren't expected to fight at all. We, we could if we were called upon to do that, but really we were there monitoring uh, the Albanians and the Serbians to ensure that, that the civil war didn't break out in that country. Uh, that, that they didn't continue to fight against one another and just to, to kind of be that presence uh, to ensure that, that a war didn't break out. So it was a, a deterrent for war, which is an important role. Uh, the same type of thing in South Korea and in Germany. Uh, but even in Iraq and Afghanistan, as the wars continue to develop, uh, the, my first tour in, in Iraq in 2005 was, was very kinetic. And that just means there was a lot of action, a lot of that infantrymen and a firefight. Uh, we had a lot more of that going on in 2005 than my return trip in 2007. As the war continues to, to develop, we, uh, we start doing a lot more of, of these other types of, of, of missions in those countries. Uh, you're still carrying a weapon and you're still on edge and ready to go into that firefight if need be. Uh, we have men and women today in Afghanistan that are still fighting for their lives. Um, some of these other types of, uh, of missions that we get into, even in those countries where we're still at war, uh, we're building hospitals and schools, establishing farming co-ops. These are some of the missions that I got to be involved in in 2007. Uh, some of the targeting that we got to do was, was finding areas that needed schools or needed hospitals or needed vocational training so that they could have teachers and doctors and nurses to work in those schools and in those hospitals. Uh, we established farming co-ops to assist in agriculture. Uh, under the rule of Saddam Hussein, the state, the government, did everything for these people. They told them when to go get seed. They told them when to, when to plow their, their, their fields. They told them when to harvest their fields. Uh, as we tried to help them establish, establish a democratic government and start that entrepreneurial uh, lifestyle so that they could do some of these jobs on their own, they needed help and they needed assistance. And those were some of the types of things that, that we would go in and do. Uh, we talked about all the different jobs that were there. Uh, in some cases, you might be a mechanic or an administrative clerk, but if you had farming background, we'd pull you out of that clerk job or out of that motor pool where you're working on vehicles to go out and help somebody work on a tractor or help them know how to, to, to sow wheat and how to harvest wheat. Uh, so we asked, we asked our men and women in, in the service to do many, many different things. Regardless of 
smart job someone did while they were, or where they did it while they were in the service. Anyone who served is a veteran and deserves to be recognized by those they serve. Veterans Day is very special to me. I'm so proud to have served and I love my country so much. I really love seeing the flag and the red, white, and blue decorations. But what really touches my heart, what I really love to see, is the men and women uh, who have gave so much of themselves being honored. Uh, men and women who have sacrificed so much. What kinds of sacrifices, you may ask? When the country calls, they go. They leave behind friends and family. They miss birthdays and anniversaries and sports games and concerts. Some even miss the birth of their own children. Uh, I'm married and have two children and have missed much of their lives while serving in my country. But they've supported me through thick and thin. Uh, they've always been there with encouragement and with love. Uh, some other sacrifices that our veterans make uh, include those who've been injured and carry the scars of their wounds for the rest of their lives. And far too many have made the ultimate sacrifice and given their lives. There are veterans here today that we have recognized. But there are also American men and women serving in over 150 countries around the globe right now. Uh, these men and women, both currently serving and those who served in the past, have secured our rights. The right for you to be here in this school and get an education. The right for us to have this assembly. This past Tuesday, we saw our country exercise one of those rights as we voted to select our governing officials. We had all those wonderful commercials over the last year that everybody loved to watch. Uh, the debates that came on your, your uh, TV during the evening when you wanted to watch your favorite program. Uh, uh, but even if your candidate did not win, we all got to participate in that process. Uh, we get to participate in our government. We can write letters to our, our governing officials and let them know how we feel and what we think. Uh, many countries around the world don't get that right. Uh, in Iraq in 2005, I had the privilege of working with the Iraqi government to help establish their voting process. Uh, up until that time, they really had not had a free voting process. And there were people there at that time that still didn't want them to have a free voting process. We had armed guards in polling stations. We had the escort with, with gun trucks, the, uh, uh, the ballot trucks that were doing the, uh, the, uh, uh, the counting and, and taking the ballots into places where they needed to be counted. Uh, so, and it wasn't perfect, but they're trying to establish that. And we're seeing that in different countries around the world where they're trying to set up a democratic process. Uh, so we are lucky to have that, that right in our country to do that. And while we have problems here in the USA, from where I've been and the places that I've seen, we still have the best country in the world. And we enjoy more freedoms than anywhere else in the world. And you can thank a veteran for that. Thank you very much.